Hello, I'm Nate, aka B tier Mutineer, and today as part of my B tier guides, I'm going to take you through a build guide for Liliana from Dragon Age Origins. I've waited quite a bit to make this guide even though Liliana is one of the first companions you recruit, because I don't like archery. I rarely use it, and if I do, I usually just use the basic archer preset. I often respecialize Liliana away from archery into a dual dagger rogue, so I took my time to research this build to make sure it would work well. Before we begin, I would like to give a shout out to Akis Herceg, who has an amazing YouTube channel with all sorts of builds for Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, and Inquisition. My starting point for this build is their Master Archer build. I'm going to leave the link to their YouTube channel in the description. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the build. Liliana starts out with 2 ranks in stealing, rank 3 if you recruit her at level 8, and with stealing maxed out if she's level 12. She also gets 1 rank in poison making, 2 ranks in combat training, with a third rank in combat training if she's level 10. The combat training skill is of course the most important one, and she starts out with two ranks in it, giving her access to tier 2 class and weapon talents, as well as a bonus to stamina regeneration in combat. The rank in poison making is alright, it allows Liliana to craft tier 1 poisons, but more importantly it allows her to use grenades. Poisons aren't usable by archers because they are only applied to melee weapons, but grenades can be a nice area of effectability to add to Liliana's arsenal if you think she needs it. If you want her to be able to craft grenades, however, you will have to increase her poison making skill further, as grenades are only available to craft from rank 2 onwards. As I've mentioned in other videos, I don't think the stealing skill is that useful. There are a few unique items you can steal from some NPCs, but otherwise you won't get a lot of value out of stealing because you're either getting a crafting ingredient, a consumable, or a small amount of money. You could use some mods that improve the stealing experience, but it's still not amazing by any means. I will mention all of Liliana's possible starting talents and then only explain the useful ones in detail. From the Barge Tree, she has Song of Valor, Distraction if she's level 8, and Song of Courage if she's level 11. Distraction dazes a target unless it passes a resistance check against Liliana's cunning. Of course, this will often be resisted since archery doesn't need much cunning, but it's still a useful ability to use in a pinch. Song of Courage is a great sustainability even with not that much cunning, because the entire party gains a bonus to attack, damage, and critical chance, and the base bonuses are already good without adding any cunning on top. Plus 3 attack, plus 2 damage, and plus 3% critical chance. From the Rogue Tree, Liliana starts with Dirty Fighting, Below the Belt if she's level 6, Deft Hands, Improved Tools, and finally Mechanical Expertise if she's level 12. Dirty Fighting is super useful because it guarantees a stun most of the time, as only enemies who are immune to stun can resist this effect. Great to use if an enemy attacks Liliana in melee, you can stun them and run away, or kill them. Below the Belt is a surprisingly good talent because its damage scales with dexterity, so it's a good and cheap ability to use in melee to kill an enemy with around 50% HP or lower. The whole Deft Hands row is crucial to max out on the rogue in your party so that you can unlock all doors and chests for extra loot and experience, so it's actually really good that Liliana has at least two points in it already when you recruit her. From the archery tree, she starts with Pinning Shot, Crippling Shot if she's level 9, Rapid Shot, Shattering Shot if she's level 7, and Suppressing Fire if she's level 10. Pinning Shot is the best early game archery ability because it can immobilize an enemy, so it's useful against enemy elites or spellcasters. Rapid Shot is a good sustained in the early game when you don't have a high chance to crit yet, since it increases the speed of your aiming but removes the ability for your shots to crit. You can safely use this until you have enough gear with Rapid Aim, as well as a bit of extra crit chance, for it to be worth switching to the Aim Sustain. Shattering Shot is particularly good against highly armored enemies, because it reduces the target's armor by 10 points for 20 seconds, and with the Master Archer passive, the penalty is increased by another 10 points. Well, Liana starts out with a lone enchanted dagger as a weapon. It's an okay early game dagger, but since Liana has absolutely no points in dual weapon talents, it's useless for her. She also has a chantry rope, which you need to replace as soon as possible with actual armor, but she does have a regular pair of leather boots, which are fine. Her unique accessory is the amulet Seeker's Circle, which gives her plus 1 to cunning and plus 10 mental resistance. Since the archer build doesn't care about cunning very much, I do recommend you switch this amulet out with something else that either gives plus to all attributes or has good defensive stats. With Liliana as an archer, you are looking to put most of the attribute points in dexterity. Bow damage is increased by dexterity only, and archery and most rogue talents have dexterity requirements. However, you do need 22 cunning to be able to unlock device mastery, which is the maximum rank of disarming traps and lockpicking. 
you may need to put some points in strength up to a total score of 20 if you want Liliana to be able to wear the highest tier light armors. But to get around this requirement, I recommend using the Dexterity Light Armors mod, which I mentioned in my Essential Mods video. That way you won't have to waste any points in strength since light armor will have dexterity requirements. Other than the 22 cunning and possibly 20 strength, put all your points in dexterity. As always, I recommend maxing out the combat training skill first to unlock the highest tier class and weapon talents for Liliana, as well as to get some various bonuses that help in combat. Since Liliana already has two ranks in stealing, you can max it out on her in case you want to make use of stealing more often. However, I think Zevron would be better at stealing. If you want to set up Liliana's behavior in her tactics so you don't have to micromanage her, you will likely also want to have some ranks in combat tactics. Depending on how detailed you want her tactics page to be, you may only need two ranks, or perhaps more. Finally, once you have maxed out all of the skills that you need and want, I recommend putting all your remaining skill points into survival for the extra nature resistance. Remember that rogues get a skill point every two levels, so at levels 2, 4, 6, 8, etc, so you'll have a lot more skill points to play around with on Liliana than on warriors or mages. Liliana starts with a good amount of archery talents as well as good rogue talents. She doesn't need a lot more in order to shine. Here are the remaining good abilities to get for her. From the rogue tree, I've already mentioned maxing out the disarm slash lockpicking talent, so be sure to pick up mechanical expertise and device mastery. Otherwise, the only other useful rogue talent is the passive ability evasion, because it adds a 20% chance to evade a physical attack, including being stunned or knocked down. However, it's the final talent in the robe with below the belt, so I recommend leaving it for later on after you've gotten some of your archery talents. From the archery tree, Melee Archer is an ability I recommend getting immediately after you recruit Liliana, since it will help her keep attacking without getting interrupted by melee attacks. Interruptions are quite annoying, especially early on when the Archer's attacks aren't even doing that much damage to begin with. Aim is an amazing sustain which decreases aim speed but grants bonuses to attack, damage, armor penetration, and critical strike. However, I recommend you use this on Liliana only after you've gotten the repeater gloves from Return to Osagar. On PC especially, the archery aiming time is horrible, so you need these gloves if you want to use aim at all. Until you have these gloves, use rapid shot instead. Master Archer is a great passive that grants bonuses to all the active and sustained archery abilities. It's a must-have since it gives you so many bonuses, but you don't need to rush getting to it since your build will really come alive in the mid-game. Critical Shot is a decent ability since it's an automatic crit if it hits, but it's not as good as Arrow of Slaying. If you want to ensure a critical strike on a high priority target and Arrow of Slaying is on cooldown however, you can use Critical Shot. Arrow of Slaying is better than Critical Shot because while it's also an auto crit if it hits, it actually does twice the amount of critical hit damage. Scatter Shot is the final useful ability since it can be a very effective crowd control ability against a large group of enemies. The arrow you fire at an enemy automatically hits and it stuns the target. Then the arrow shatters, hitting all nearby enemies and stunning them too. Liliana already has the Bard specialization when you recruit her, which is a pretty good specialization for the Song of Courage passive for your entire party, as well as the distraction ability in case Liliana or another squishy is in danger. The second specialization I recommend for her at level 14 is Duelist. It gives you a bonus of plus 2 to dexterity and plus 1 damage, and it has an amazing sustained ability, Dueling, which gives you a bonus to attack, and with the upgrade Keen Defense, also a bonus to defense. The other two duelist abilities are unfortunately used for melee abilities only, but really, the dueling, sustain, and the passive bonus you get from choosing the specialization are good enough. For weapons, you can either go for a short bow or a long bow. Short bows have a shorter range and do less damage, but they do aim faster, whereas long bows have a longer range and do more damage, but aim slower. I prefer long bows since there are more options to choose from. My favorite longbow is the Soros of Arlathan, which has plus 3 damage, rapid aim, plus 6% range critical chance, and plus 3 armor penetration. It's a DLC related item that requires you to unlock an achievement in the Witch Hunt DLC. It requires 34 dexterity, so you'll be able to equip it in the mid game. Marjolan's Recurve is a Liliana only longbow that you can get during her personal quest. It has plus 3 cunning, plus 3 damage, and rapid aim. If you don't have the Soros of Arlathan, I highly recommend this for the extra damage and rapid aim properties, plus the fact that it's thematically appropriate. A note, I do not recommend Far Song because it requires letting Owen from Redcliffe die, and I don't advocate for any kind of min-maxing in general, but especially not the kind that involves killing or letting a specific friendly NPC die. 
For the early game, until Liliana has 34 dexterity to equip one of the two good bows, equip the scout's bow. It can be purchased from Varathorn in the Dalish camp. It's a cheap short bow that has a small bonus to rapid aim. You can also get this bow from the Dalish elf origin if you persuade Master Island to give you one or purchase one from him. And it can also be found in random elven treasure. Of course, you can also have a basic long bow or short bow for Liliana, that's also fine. In terms of short bows, the Whitewood bow is the best early game bow and best short bow overall since it requires only 18 dexterity to equip and can be acquired pretty easily during the Trial of Crows questline in the Kadan Fey hideout. Its plus 3 damage bonus makes it deal almost as much damage as a longbow and it also has a plus 5% range critical chance. Being a shortbow, it has faster aim speed already so it's fine that it doesn't have rapid aim. I've seen some people use this bow for the entire game so if for some reason you don't want to use Sorrows of Arlathan or Marjolaine's bow, then the Whitewood bow will be just fine. In terms of armor, you're interested in light armors due to not wanting to waste points in strength. The best light chess pieces are Battle Dress of the Provocateur. This is a DLC related item that requires an achievement in the Liliana Song DLC. It's the best in slot in my opinion. Plus 4 dexterity, plus 5 armor, plus 15% chance to dodge, combat stamina regeneration, and plus 50 stamina. The Felon's Coat is sold by Heren in Denerim after three main quests have been completed. It's second best with plus 6 dexterity, plus 9 defense, plus 4 armor, stamina regen in combat, and plus 15 physical resistance. I still prefer the Battle Dress due to it having dodge chance, but if you don't have it unlocked, then the Felon's Coat is the best base game chess piece. Shadow of the Empire is a decently good chess piece for Liliana, offering plus 2 strength and plus 2 dexterity, as well as some combat stamina regen. It's cheaper than the Felon's Coat and more readily available as you can buy it from Legnar in the Orzammar Commons at any time. Early game, if you would like to get a little upgrade for Liliana's armor before you can get any of these chess pieces, then I recommend taking a trip to the Dalish camp and Brisillian Forest to get Liliana a Dalish armor set. The full set has plus 2 dexterity, plus 3 defense, and an extra plus 5 defense from the set bonus. You can have this set already if your warden is Dalish. You can purchase a set from Varathorn in the Dalish camp, or you can find various pieces of it in elven treasure containers, such as in the Brazilian forest. For gloves, however, you really do need the repeater gloves from Return to Ostagar. The rapid aim property makes archery much more viable, especially on PC, where aiming takes longer than on consoles. Until you get them, you could use gloves that give you dexterity, such as Wade Superior, Drakeskin gloves, or the Dalish gloves. For boots, my personal favorites are the Lion's Paw, this is a DLC item that gives you plus 1 armor, plus 10% chance to dodge, and plus 10 chance to avoid missile attacks. As a second choice, you can also use the Silver Hammer's Tack Masters, which give plus 2 to dexterity and can be purchased from Bodan in the party camp. And as a third option, you could use either the Dalish Boots or Wade Superior Drakeskin Boots for a little bit of a bonus. In terms of helmets, the Long Sight gives you plus 5% range critical chance, which is a huge bonus. You can get this from the High Dragon during the Urn of Sacred Ashes quest. And the Armsman Tensioneer is great for its bonus to rapid aim, but it also gives you plus 6 to attack. You can purchase this from Varathorn at the Dalish Camp after three main quests have been completed. For accessories, you're mainly focusing on rounding out Liliana's defensive capabilities. She will have a high defense from her high dexterity score, and thus already be quite hard to hit. However, she wears light armor, so if she is hit, the armor doesn't mitigate as much damage, and she is vulnerable to enemy spells and area of effect abilities. The idea is to increase Liliana's chance to dodge further, her HP in case she does get hit by something, and ideally her spell resistance. This amount of optimization is something I don't recommend because it involves using the Singe of Skillful Maneuvering Belt, the Spell Ward Amulet, and the Life Giver Ring to get the optimal stats. As I mentioned in all of my builds, these items are highly contested since most builds find them useful, as well as often being expensive or hard to get, so I let you choose who you want to give them to and if you can afford them or if you have them unlocked in the first place. I will say that out of all of the contested items, the belt Cinch of Skillful Maneuvering feels pretty great on Liliana due to its bonus to dodge chance and spell resistance. Otherwise, for belts, you could also give Liliana the Long Bowman's Belt for the plus 2% to range critical chance. This can be purchased from Bodan in the party camp. In terms of amulets, you could consider using the Blood Gorged Amulet for the plus 12 to constitution. It can be found in the DLC area Kadash Taik after you finish the Dwarven quest and you have Shale in your party. Do note that this amulet also gives minus 3 to strength, so equip any items that have strength requirements before equipping this amulet if its penalty would take you below the strength requirement. 
Pearl of the Anointed is a DLC amulet that gives plus one to all attributes, and it's a decent item to give to Liliana if you don't have something better. For rings, I recommend two out of the following. Band of Fire is a decent defensive option for its plus three constitution, plus 25% fire resistance, and plus 10% spirit resistance. The Harvest Festival Ring is pretty great, plus 2 to strength and dexterity, and plus 4 to attack. Especially if you want to use less points in strength to be able to equip higher tier armors, this ring will help with that. You can find this ring in the DLC area Honleith Village. Ring of the Warrior is very similar, giving plus 2 to strength and dexterity, again very useful for equipping higher tier armors, but the dex bonus of both of these rings does help with Liliana's bow damage as well. You can find Ring of the Warrior at the end of the Drifter's Cash Quest in the Deep Roads. The Lucky Stone is a pretty good DLC item because it gives plus one to all attributes. However, if we're talking about all attributes, the Key to the City ring is obviously better because it gives plus two to all attributes. However, it's one of those contested items that pretty much everyone wants. With this archery build, Liliana will be very good at sniping elite enemies and enemy spellcasters. You'll want her to use Arrow of Slaying, or if it's on cooldown, then Critical Shot on such an enemy so that they are quickly neutralized. The three sustained abilities that Yana should have activated are Aim, Song of Courage, and Dueling. If a dangerous enemy attacks Aliana in melee, she should either use Dirty Fighting or Distraction in order to CC it so that she has time to run away or kill them. If you're fighting a large group of enemies, she can use Scattershot to stun them all. On an enemy with medium or higher armor rating, Liliana should use Shattering Shot. Pinning Shot is only useful in the early game to immobilize spellcaster or elite enemies, but enemies may easily resist this effect, so you can stop using it once you have Arrow of Slaying or Critical Shot or Scatter Shot for ACC option. Finally, Below the Belt is a great finishing melee ability if an enemy attacks Liliana and has relatively low health, since it will do a good amount of damage due to scaling with dexterity. Otherwise, when Liliana isn't sniping high priority enemies with her auto crit abilities, she'll just be auto attacking and doing lots of damage with her attacks due to the high dexterity, aim and song of courage passives, and bonuses from gear. In conclusion, despite my dislike for the archer playstyle in Origins, Liliana can be a powerful damager, especially when it comes to killing elites and mages. She is also of great utility to the party with her bard sustain, CCing many enemies at once with scattershot, as well as being able to disarm traps and pick locks. In terms of party composition, with Liliana being a backline sniper, you should have at least one tank, and I also highly recommend a mage who can heal your party as well as help on the damage from a far front. For the fourth party member, you can use another tank, a frontline damager, or a second mage. The frontline damager could actually be a mage in the form of an arcane warrior. Be on the lookout for an arcane warrior video soon, by the way. That will be the build I recommend for a mage warden. But before that, I'd love to hear from you. Do you like using archers in Dragon Age Origins? Is there a different way you like to build them? And which class do you think does better at archery, rogues or warriors? Let me know in the comments. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this character build for Liliana in Dragon Age Origins. If you're looking forward to seeing more of my Dragon Age videos, as well as occasionally some videos on other RPGs, do remember to subscribe and leave a like and comment while you're at it too. This has been B-Tier Mutineer. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.